Lewis, my friend, this one's for you. I got an email. Hey, Spat, can you put up a video showing how to make a bootable flash drive the archway? While I have covered that material in previous episodes, I never made a singular video specific to this point. So I figured, why not? This should be fun to do. So here's my uh, flash drive here. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. Okay, since we're doing this the arch way, let's open up a terminal here. All right, and the first thing we want to do is, now that I plugged in that flash drive, I need to find out where it is. So I'm just going to type in list block. LS, BLK. All right, and you're going to see that it is assigned to SDC. Okay, good stuff. And it just so happens I have an image that I'm going to install on this. So let me just change directory to downloads here. All right, and then I'm just going to list the contents of the directory. You're going to see I have an Arch Linux ISO here. All right, if I go to uh, the Arch Linux website here, I downloaded this using BitTorrent, and uh, you'll see there is a SHA-1 sum for this image. So why don't we compare that to make sure that our download wasn't corrupted. So I'm going to reopen my terminal here. I'm going to type in SHA-1 sum, and then I'm going to type in arch, then tab, all right, and that completes it without me having to type the whole thing in. It's going to give me a number here, and then I can compare it against the number I have here. The number starts out 64070, and that's what I have here, 64070, and it ends with C4A0A5, and I see that here, c 4 a 0A5. Usually that's just the quick and dirty way that I check to make sure the uh, SHA sums are correct. Um, generally speaking, if I had a corrupt download, there would be a significant difference in these numbers, or at least I believe uh, that would be the situation. But at any rate, that's what we have here. Since we're only going to be um, installing this uh, Arch Linux ISO to the flash drive. I already know the command, so I'm going to type it in. And then while we're waiting for the image to write, I will explain some of the stuff, uh, or my personal experience, with using um, DD uh, for my own personal benefits. All right, so let's go DD if equals... Okay, arch. Okay, and then pressing tab will complete that statement. And then of equals slash dev slash sdc. Okay, and then while it's doing this, I want to check its progress. So I will do status equals progress. Let's go ahead and send this on the way. All right, and now it's giving me a progress of what's being copied, and then once it's completed, then we can boot this image. All right? DD is a powerful tool, and I use this for many different scenarios. Um, let's say you have a computer that you, you know, uh, want to maybe donate to a church or just give away or sell and you want to uh, wipe your hard disks. DD is an awesome program for doing that. You can erase your uh, old hard drives. Uh, it has zero writing capabilities. Or if you have a tinfoil hat on your head like my uh, friend Ben, uh, you can also write random data to the drive before zero writing in the drive. In most cases, though, zero writing will be sufficient for most people. Okay, and all of that is explained here. Okay, also, um, I recently purchased a computer from Amazon, a refurbished model with an i7 with plenty of RAM and that sort of thing. But I wanted the same operating system that is on my desktop on that new computer. And, of course, DD comes to the rescue. Just using a standard uh, live CD... 
I was able to uh, boot into my laptop and then taking a simple cable, and they sell these on Amazon or on eBay dirt cheap. You can plug this into your uh, hard drive, plug it into the computer, and then using DD from a live disk image, you can copy your operating system from one hard drive to the other. It will copy your boot sectors and all the information over, and then you just plug this new drive into the new machine, and boom! You know, you've got a working operating system. Now, in my situation, I had to go in with the live image after the drive was installed and do some tweaking with Etsy FSTAB because I had other drive assignments and other things that I wanted in there. And so, uh, you know, that was uh, an option for me. But that's not always going to be a, a, a situation for all users. Uh, so your mileage will vary. So you can see here, there's a lot of different things that you can do. It tells you how to clone partitions, a clone an entire hard disk. You can back up a partition table. Okay, and th these kind of things I haven't quite gotten into. Uh, there was one time I had a problem with uh, my master boot record, and this document saved my behind. So awesome stuff, but... You know, with knowledge comes responsibility. Um, maybe doing a dry run in a virtual environment could be a good thing because you really don't want to uh, mess up uh, your data, for sure. Okay, it also has information on troubleshooting and that sort of thing. So, all this stuff is really good. So, all of this will be linked directly below. Okay, and... Let's see if our uh, image is ready to go. Okay, excellent. The data has been copied, and now we can proceed to the next step. Now that our flash drive has been created, I'd like to demonstrate that it's working. And so I'm going to load that up in VirtualBox. Alright, so I have already created a virtual machine here, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and, and the flash drive is already assigned to it, and I'm just going to press start here. Okay, and this will boot up, and I always like to uh, boot Arch Linux installation media into the memory. So I'll go ahead and select this. And then while this is booting, I'll give you a brief explanation of how I'm getting a USB flash drive to boot in VirtualBox. Okay? And um, this requires you to jump through a few extra hoops, unfortunately. Um, you would think that it would allow you to boot a USB stick, but it doesn't. All right, OS Technics here has a really nice tutorial that it takes you through the procedure of setting this up. And um, it's not really all that difficult. First, you're going to use a, a VBox image to convert the plugged-in flash drive into a, a VMDK file that uh, VirtualBox can read. And then it's just a few other procedures to ensure that your user um, is in the proper groups to be able to use the image. Of course, you need to change the owner uh, to your user using the change owner command here. All right, and then it's just a matter of assigning the uh, VMDK file into VirtualBox so that it can use it. And I have a have that USB VMDK here. It, the procedure really isn't that difficult, so I felt that it didn't require um, that much coverage. And of course, as you can see here, we have a booted system, and then now I can go in and install Arch Linux if I wanted to, and pretty much the procedure hasn't changed a whole lot since the last time I did an Arch Linux installed video, so no need to reinvent the wheel there. So, um, that was a very good suggestion, Lewis. Thank you for uh, giving that. And uh, let me go ahead and close this here. Um, 
And for those who didn't see my uh, public comment that I made uh, in in the comment section of my last video, um, I've noticed that there is a greater interest uh, in the communities that I hang around in online uh, when I do have a little bit of free time available, that there is a growing demand for people who wish to uh, produce audio and video on Linux. And unfortunately, I'm seeing that there is a lack of content uh, in that area, and that's something I wish to change. So in upcoming episodes, I will, I'll still try and do uh, an ad a distribution uh, overview, you know, uh, as my free time permits. But I'm also going to be looking more into multimedia distributions or um, plugins that people can use, which are readily available for uh, producing great audio content in Linux. So th you're going to see a lot more of that coming up in the future. Maybe once in a while I'll do a distribution review if my limited free time permits for that. All right, well, that's all I have in today's Cup of Linux Quickie. As a reminder, a little bit of love goes a very long way. So please be sure to take some of your time and be excellent with somebody today. Stay safe, everyone. Peace out.